So to bring us up to date on just what the situation is here in Louisville and why. John, I think for Louisville right now we are under a tornado warning. Is that correct? That's right. Since 3 this afternoon, we have a hook echo on the radar about 20 miles southwest of Louisville, moving northeast about 45 to 50 miles per hour. Now, this storm will move through Jefferson County in a northeasterly direction, and reports have indicated up to this time that this is, is a tornado. We've had reports from Hardensburg. They saw it there. We saw it at Irvington, and it's headed in our direction. So generally, people should take precautions for the next 20 to 30 minutes. Can you pinpoint, John, the direction that it's going, or will it be, would you say, south of the Ohio? Looks like it'll blow right through the Jefferson County, Glenn. I feel now that the way it's headed, it's going to track from about 240 degrees from southwest of Louisville to the airport. I just hesitate to say any specific areas of the county, but I just feel that she's going to blow right across the county. Okay, let's do that again, uh, John. Got, uh, a little, little, little sound, little read early, sir. All right. Uh, can you pinpoint, John, the direction it's going? Will it be, would you say, south of the Ohio? Looks like it'll blow right through Jefferson County, Glenn. I feel now that the way it's headed, it's going to track from about 240 degrees from the southwest to the airport. I just hesitate to say any specific areas of the county, but I just feel she's going to blow right across the county. A little bit uh, earlier, we had one for the southern Indiana counties along the river up through Madison. What is the situation there? Well, we had a big cell that went up across Harrison County. We had six reports of tornadoes from Harrison County about an hour ago. That moved on northward into Indiana. We had a number of reports of tornadoes over there. But then the past ten minutes, we've had a report from the Dow Corning people just above Carrollton that they saw a tornado across the river in Indiana. And about 15 minutes ago, a gentleman from Bedford, Kentucky, phoned us. He was looking out of his window and gave us a blow, blow, blow description of a tornado. He said it looked like it was trying to form a twin headed northeast toward Milton. Dave Reeves just handed me another report, six miles west-southwest to Brandenburg, close to Midway, a tornado near U.S. Highway 60. So there again. John, could you give us quickly some safety rules, uh, people in their homes, what they should do? At this time, the best thing to do, get your portable radio so you can stay tuned to the radio station, head for the basement, southwest corner of the basement, if possible, get under a workbench or some sturdy piece of furniture. If you have no basement, you head for an inside room which has uh, walls that are not too far apart, hopefully with enough support above you. Uh, that nothing will come down on top of you. Those in mobile homes and whatnot should uh, hopefully can find some shelter uh, outside of the mobile home. Mobile homes are very vulnerable to this type of activity. Now, I don't want to get people over-concerned. I just uh, know this uh, excites people to a great extent, but nevertheless, they should take these reasonable precautions and not get overly excited because uh, uh, they would hear it coming if it did come in their direction. The noise associated with these is very loud, so they, they should hear the noise associated with these storms. But by all means, I would certainly suggest heading for shelter, which is, let's say, the basement or an inside room during the next 45 minutes to an hour, and take the radio along so you can stay on top of this. John, we'll let you get back to the radar screen. Thank you much. Okay, Glenn, you're welcome. Jeff? Okay, Glenn Baston uh, chatting with the... Uh, Chief Meteorologist, is that what we call him? And John Burke, and bringing us as uh, the complete update picture on the weather situation, and of course more as it happens right here on WHAS. Thank you, Glenn, and it's 418. The other day a fella asked me, are you the motorist insurance... You know us! All right, traffic tracker uh, Gilbert, it's a, it's a wild afternoon... And you are a service of Beef and Boards Dinner Theater, Simpsonville, where you dine in elegance, see a Broadway show, offer one low price. Dick? Well, we do have a pretty uh, wild and rugged uh, weather picture on our hands here, so uh, be prepared for it as you're driving. The pavements are wet now uh, throughout the driving area. I haven't made it out to the extreme northeast corner yet, but the rest of the picture has uh, wet pavements all the way, lightning and uh, gusty winds, and uh, sprinkles and uh, bursts and gusts of rain here and there. So watch it. And the uh, traffic is starting to slow down, as you might expect it would under these conditions. Westbound on the Watterson. 
We have very heavy traffic. It looks like a morning situation. Starting back at Taylor Boulevard, I'm sorry, at Taylorsville Road, and it's running very slowly and heavily to the top of the hills we got over near Pumper Level. Eastbound, we're tightening up back at uh, Taylor Boulevard and running heavily all the way out to Durrett Lane. The uh, southwest, I couldn't get out in the extreme southwest on Dixie Highway and uh, out in the Pleasure Ridge Park area. The weather looked uh, a little bit suspicious out there. So uh, you folks out there have to be on your own for a little bit. But the uh, outer loop around the uh, Kentucky Turnpike looked pretty good, and Preston is still doing a, a nice job. No delays over a block long at any of the lights there. Southbound on I-65, starting to slow down now at the horse barns, running a bit heavily out to the Watterson Interchange. Drive carefully, Dick Gilbert, Skywatch 84. It's Broadway Tonight, now playing at Beef and Boards Dinner Theater in Simpsonville, as Nick DeNoya and Ken Berman present the Joy People in a song and dance romp from the Zigfield era to South Pacific, George M. and West Side Story. The Joy People. You've seen them in TV Spectaculars with Alan King, with Michael Landon, too. The Joy People, now playing at Beef and Boards Dinner Theater in the Joyful Music Review, Broadway Tonight. A great evening for the whole family. For reservations, phone 502-451-4900. All right, a tornado warning in effect until 5 o'clock for Metro Louisville tonight. We will continue with music good and gold. We will, of course, interrupt for all important weather information. B.J. Thomas, and I just can't help believing. A lot of people uh, leaving their uh, work now, getting into cars. And uh, let me briefly review the weather situation. There are severe thunderstorm warnings for a good portion of this area, including Metro Louisville and uh, southern Indiana. But more importantly now, we have a... Tornado warning, which includes all of Metro Louisville and uh, surrounding areas. This is a uh, warning. It will be in effect until 5 o'clock tonight, so be on the lookout, be on guard. We reviewed the rules, uh, suggestions for what you should do if you uh, should spot a tornado. Uh, you might, might be a good idea to, you know, keep a lookout. Uh, there have been numerous, numerous sightings in and around the area of tornadoes. Not trying to alarm anyone, but we want you to be aware of the situation and know that, uh, you know, should something happen, you can take cover. Now, we are told that tornadoes make a good deal of noise, so you'll probably hear one if you, you know, if one is around. And uh, like I said, keep an eye out for tornadoes, at least until 5 o'clock. We'll have updates until then from uh, the Weather Bureau and Weather Service. All righty? Okay, we'll continue with music. From WHAS and Jeff Douglas, it's 425. This is Sammy Joe and Tell Me a Lie. Tell me a lie. Chuck Paddock, WHAS News. Uh, County police report a tornado sighted at Terry in Greenwood in the southwest section of Jefferson County. They say the tornado is moving in a path directly north. Uh, At this time, people in that area should take cover immediately. Again, Jefferson County Police report a tornado sighted at Terry in Greenwood in southwest Jefferson County. People should take cover at this time. Take a portable radio with you if you can and keep posted on the weather. Uh, We might, at this point, while we have this tornado sighted in Metro Louisville, go over some of the safety rules that uh, you can take at this point to uh, protect yourself from any damage. In a home, move to a basement if possible. The southwest corner is probably the safest, offers the greatest protection. In a factory, move to an interior section which offers the greatest protection. If you're an open country, as you might be in the southwest part of the county, move away from the tornado if you sight it at a path at right angles to the tornado. There's, uh, if there's no time to escape from the winds, Lie flat in the nearest depression, such as a ditch or ravine. Again, by uh, Jefferson County Police, a tornado sighted Terry and Greenwood in southwest Jefferson County, uh, just slightly west of Shively. Uh, It's moving toward the north. If you live in that area, uh, be prepared to move to a place of safety right now. Take cover. We'll be back in just a few minutes with uh, more information. Okay, uh, that uh, let's just do that one more time where it was spotted so that people won't, uh, you know, panic about it. Where was it? Was it was sighted at Terry and Greenwood, Terry which and is Greenwood. Uh, in the southwest part of the county, okay. and it's reportedly moving directly north at this time. All right. 
Thanks again, Chuck. Burn my money with my hands, ain't throwing it away. Working hard to make things better, cause there ain't no other way. When I'm at McDonald's, quarter pounders are what I take. I want the biggest, the greatest, the best hamburger they make. Because you deserve a break today at McDonald's. All righty, it's 428. We are uh, trying to keep you up to date on all this weather information, and we will continue to do so until the uh, situation is uh, entirely passed, okay? Okay, let me remind you about something else here. This is about Sexton. You know, the home insulation people. They remind you that uh, to insulate your home uh, can mean to save a lot of energy, particularly during this energy shortage. And it also means that you can uh, probably use your home better. In other words, it'll be, you know, warmer when it should be and cooler when it should be. Sexton has been in business for more than 11 years in Louisville, so no matter what the insulation problem they find with your house, they've seen it before. They know how to handle it. Perhaps your upstairs at home is warmer in summer and colder in winter than the rest of the house. That may mean you need to have the attic checked for proper insulation. Now, we have uh, considerable problems with uh, insulation in our house, and we're going to look into this, and I hope maybe you will too. Sexton, they're experts in home insulation. And an estimate is entirely free, so what have you got to lose? Give them a call at 964-6510. Sexton Insulation for your home. We'll save you money and uh, save you uh, all sorts of headaches. Will I read this? Of course I'll read this. All right, this, these are some uh, tornado safety rules that we should go over, and we will. People in houses without basements... Should uh, will receive some protection by taking cover under furniture, such as a table against walls. If you are in an office building, stand in an interior hallway or lower floor, preferably in the basement. Now, in factories, if you should receive a tornado warning, post a lookout. Workers should move quickly to sections of the plant offering the greatest protection. In open country, move away from the tornado's path at a right angle. If there is no time to escape, lie flat in the nearest depression, such as a ditch or a ravine. If you're in your home, seek inside shelter, preferably in a tornado cellar, basement or steel-framed or reinforced concrete building of substantial construction uh, will, will offer the, the best. Stay away from windows. Some tornado, tornado safety rules. Let's see what it looks like from the air with our traffic tracker, Dick Gilbert. He is a service of Louisville Trust Bank. Dick? Well, I'm out over at Oxmoor Shopping Center now, the Watterson and Shelbyville Road, and uh, checking out the eastern quadrant here. Flashes of lightning now and then, and uh, there's light rain on the bubble. All of the pavements are wet. Traffic is very heavy, and it's slowed down significantly, as you might expect under these conditions. The Watterson, for example, is already very heavy both east and westbound. Westbound, it looks like a morning situation. We're tightening at Taylor, I'm sorry, Taylorsville Road. And it's running rather slowly, westbound, all the way over into the Poplar Level area. Let's see here. I don't actually physically see the, uh, any tornado activity at the moment, but it does look highly suspicious down there beyond uh, the Iroquois Park area and out in the southwest. So uh, that appears to be the, uh, the area that's uh, affected at the moment. All in all, uh, I know of no specific accidents and so forth. The wet pavements, strong, gusty winds, I can certainly testify to those. So be extra careful, particularly on bridges and overpasses. Dick Gilbert, Skywatch, 84. WHAS Sports 84. All right, looking at sports this afternoon. Tonight, game number two in the Kentucky-Carolina ABA first round playoffs. Freedom Hall, 7.55 airtime on the Cutley Giant. Final approval has been given for spring harness racing dates at Lexington's Red Mile, where a 44-night meet opens on April 26th. Norm Sloan of North Carolina State, he's the National College Basketball Coach of the Year, named today. And an announcement is expected today or later on today in Cincinnati on whether Henry Aaron will play in tomorrow's season opening baseball game, or Vice President Gerald Ford will throw out the first baseball. Oh, 
Okay, let's cut in here. Chuck Paddock is here with a phone call. Chuck. Okay. Uh, John Burke is on the phone, and he is about to leave the weather service. I understand you've got the tornado sighted there. No, I don't see a tornado, but here comes the wind. We're hitting winds up the good gracious sakes alive. How high is the wind speed at this time? There's 50 right there. By golly, the whole thing's going hit. I'm going. Good on. Okay. John Burke at the National Weather Service. John Burke at the National Weather Service office at the airport. Uh, apparently the tornado activity over there at this time. Uh, we'll be checking back as soon as uh, he can get back into that area. Uh, what, what what did he mean by I'm going? Did uh, It uh, sounded he, almost like the wind was at the Weather Bureau. Is yes. That, is uh, that what John he John was telling me before we got on that he was going to have to get out of there quick. Oh, I see. And uh, apparently he got out of there quicker than he wanted to. Uh, we've had tornado activity over uh, southern Louisville at this time uh, in the airport area. And I would suggest that uh, you uh, take cover immediately if you're in any of the factories or in any of the areas there. And, Jeff, I would appreciate it if one more time you could go over those tornado safety rules for people. All right. Uh, I certainly will. All I've got to really do is uh, find them, uh, Chuck, which uh, might just take a second. You <laughs> sort of caught okay. me at a loss well, here. Well, in that case, uh, we'll go over what we have right now. Uh, right. Tornado warning in effect for Metro Louisville, Jefferson County, and primarily at this point, the tornado activity is over the airport. Uh, that's uh, in southern Louisville, and anybody in that area should take cover at this time. Uh, John Burke uh, at the Weather Service uh, reported a visual sighting of it, and uh, he has taken cover at this time, and I think it would be wise if anybody in that area would uh, move to an interior hallway of their home if they have no basement, go to the basement immediately, take a radio with you if you have one. And uh, if you're um, in a factory, uh, move to uh, the strongest part of the factory, the most uh, strong construction, and f for all purposes, stay away from windows. Here's Jeff with the safety rules. Let me see if I got this straight before you run off, Chuck. I, I apparently didn't understand you, and I don't want to, you know, press the point, but I was a little confused. Was the fact that they were having difficult weather at the Weather Bureau itself? Definitely. He said he had sighted the high winds and that it was just a matter of a few moments before he felt there would be a tornado there, and apparently at this point there is a tornado at the airport. Perhaps Dick Gilbert could check in and tell us what he sees at this point. Well, okay. Uh, Dick, if you're uh, up there in Skywatch 84, what, ha what can you add? Well, apparently... He is. He might be on another frequency or something. Let me go over these rules here. Okay, good. Maybe Dick they will are, check back with us. They are important. Seek inside shelter, preferably in a tornado cellar, basement, or steel-framed or reinforced concrete building of substantial construction. Stay away from windows. In homes, the corner of the basement toward the tornado, usually the southwest corner, generally offers the greatest safety. People in houses without basements will receive some protection by taking cover under furniture, such as a table against inside walls. Now, an office building stand in an interior hallway or lower floor, preferably in the basement. In factories, on receiving a tornado warning, post a lookout. Workers should have moved quickly to sections of the plant offering the greatest protection. In schools, go to basement if available. If there is no basement but building is of reinforced construction, stay inside away from windows whenever possible. Go to interior hallway on the lowest floor. Avoid auditoriums and gymnasiums with large, poorly supported roofs. And finally, in open country, move away from the tornado's path at a right angle. If there is no time to escape, lie flat in the nearest depression, such as a ditch or a ravine. It's 440. Bob Johnson has joined us. Bob? Jeff, the city police say that a tornado is moving across the southern part of the city. It was spotted near the fairgrounds, moving from the south, generally toward the north. They say that it has touched down near the fairgrounds and apparently damaged Freedom Hall. We don't have any more details at this time other than the fact that people in the Louisville area should take cover. Okay, and on that, our lights in here begin to blink. Okay, Bob, I appreciate any more that we, uh, when, when you get information, we'll have it right on the air. Let's see if we can uh, contact our traffic tracker, Dick Gilbert, in Skywatch 84 for a, a report. Dick? Yes. Okay. Can you uh, tell us, fill us in anything more on what you can see from your vantage point? Well, it's a spectacular sight. Uh, the low clouds, very black low clouds. Uh, let's see. At the moment, they're just about over Bowman Field out at uh, Taylorsville Road area. And it is swirling around, and uh, it looks like uh, smoke underneath it. There is no real tight, uh, definitive tornado as such. 
It's still turning at a large... Yes, there's one now. Start it, yes. Dipping down from the bottom of the cloud. And uh, let's see, that will be uh, over in the highlands and uh, probably along Bardstown Road and somewhere near Eastern Parkway is where I guess that one is. The power transformers have been blowing regularly in the path of this thing, uh, big large explosions of blue-white light that uh, help to uh, clock it pretty well. Now it's clearing up very nicely behind it. As a matter of fact, uh, just south of Stanford, it's uh, clear. I can see all of the hills. The Iroquois Park area is just about out of it now. But it is definitely uh, moving up toward the Crescent Hill water tank now, and I'm starting to get some strong, very strong gusts way out here on uh, Bardstown Road near the GE plant. That's the way it looks to me. Be very, very careful. Dick Gilbert, Skywatch, 84. Okay, Dick, thank you, and uh, Byron Crawford is here. All right, uh, Jeff, Dave Reeves of the Weather Service is on the phone. Dave, uh, you've seen something. Yes, we've been tracking this uh, tornado on ra radar, and we just uh, witnessed it uh, past uh, north of uh, uh, Stanford Field here. It was, e it was north of the fairgrounds. Uh, it, you know, uh, uh, to us, it appeared like it maybe went over the executive end area, but I'm sure it was north of there. It was moving uh, almost due east, and uh, it was quite a black shaft, and you could see debris lifting up in the shaft. So anyone in eastern Jefferson County and the counties just east of Jefferson should, uh, I would say, take cover at once if possible. Dave, is there any indication that there is more than one tornado in the vicinity? No. Uh, once... Uh, once these uh, echoes uh, get right overhead on our radar, we just see one big spot, and it's, it's quite difficult until they move out away from us, you know, say 10 miles east of us, then we start picking them up again. But we didn't have any indication there would be more than one funnel. But uh, it's not uncommon at all to have, you know, two or three funnels. Is so we did see this one uh, touch down, and uh, it was quite a swirl. All right, David, I suppose that the, uh, the rules for... Uh taking cover and tornadoes in should apply and people should definitely uh, if they can move very out definitely. if you're uh, in eastern Jefferson County or the counties just east of Jefferson very definitely I, I would take uh, take some kind of shelter if I could find it alright thank you Dave Reeves of the Weather Service Jeff alright Byron uh, I guess it, it might be a good idea just to go over one more time some, <laughs> of, these, uh, the some of these rules here for uh, tornado safety you should seek uh, inside shelter in a tornado cellar or basement or steel-framed or reinforced concrete building of substantial construction. Stay away from windows. In homes, the corner of the basement toward the tornado, usually the southwest corner, generally offers the greatest safety. People in houses without basements will receive some protection by uh, taking cover under furniture, such as a large table against an inside wall in the home. In office buildings, stand in an interior hallway or lower floor, preferably in the basement. In factories, on receiving a tornado warning, post a lookout. Workers should move quickly to sections of the plant offering the greatest protection. In open country, move away from the tornado's path at a right angle. If there is no time to escape, lie flat in the nearest depression, such as a ditch or a ravine. And we've had these sightings. And uh, Bob Johnson was in here with a report from the police about uh, some of the activity that had, uh, had happened out at Freedom Hall. There were some reports that there was some damage out there at the fairgrounds. Uh, we don't have much more on that story. We will. It's 4.44 on WHAS. We have uh, sort of uh, suspended our normal operations here as this uh, tornado situation develops. We have News Director Glenn Baston here, and uh, Glenn, what have we now? Well, we've just talked with Freedom Hall, and they're still trying to assess the damage out there, I should say, the Kentucky Ferry and Exposition Center. And uh, according to an official, they really don't know what the damage is uh, there. They do know that apparently one of the horse barns was damaged by these winds. They do not think at this time that uh, Freedom Hall has been hurt. Let me emphasize, if I may, Jeff, that uh, we will pass along all the information that uh, is, is available from the Weather Service, from Dick Gilbert, from the police, please do not tie up the phone lines of these agencies. If uh, you have something to report, a specific item, please report it to the police, but don't call them or someone else to find out what's going on. Jeff? Glenn, at this point, we have a report from city police that the tornado is still rather strong and is moving into the St. Matthews area at this time. Okay. Jeff has something uh, new to add, I think. 
Glenn, why don't you just come over here very informally? You can't do it on that line. Uh, I've got uh, John Burke of the Weather Service on the line here, and uh, we'll just make the right connections, and we'll be... All right. Yes, John. Yeah, that storm, we could watch it come right in on the airport here, Glenn. There was no funnel in it until it actually got right to the airport, then a funnel developed right in the parking lot north of the terminal building and moved on to the east. And it's moving eastward 45 to 50 miles per hour. So this was 10 minutes ago, so that's over in the eastern part of Jefferson County now, moving on eastward. However, Glenn, we do have another big storm down uh, south of us, headed east, and it's headed in the direction of Mount Washington, another one about the same size. And uh, so for the next hour or so, the Mount Washington area certainly should be on the alert for developments and take all proper precautions, like we were mentioning earlier. Okay, now this cloud, that uh, this storm that is moving through Jefferson County, does it appear on your radar to be moving out of the uh, heavily populated area? Yes, it's over east of, uh, I would say, east of Bowman Field now and moving on eastward at about 45 to 50 miles an hour. And as I say, when it went through here, it didn't have a funnel when it came in, but the funnel developed right here in the parking lot. And then it moved on to the east. We could see it move on off to the east. And that's when I left the air before because I was going to get out of there. I was right next to the window, and I was talking to Chuck, and I just uh, thought it was time for me to leave. I can't really say that I blame you. Uh, the Mount Washington storm, what does it appear right now to, uh, it, does it appear to be another severe one? Yes, another one, and on the intensity of the one we had, and it could very well uh, contain a tornado also. So those people in that area to the south of Louisville, across through the into the Mount Washington area there and on across in that direction uh, uh, from Oklahoma on across through there. Just take precautions. I, I would certainly advise getting down on the basement with your portable radio and stay on top of the situation. Do these two storms that you're talking about now appear to be uh, the major ones that are developing at the moment? Well, at the moment, yes. We've had uh, development and dissipation throughout the afternoon. Storms build, and then uh, after a while, they tend to dissipate once they use up all the energy available. I would imagine this storm that just passed through here has probably reached maximum and then uh, uh, probably uh, approaching a dissipating stage at this time. But nevertheless, in the east, east of Jefferson County, it should be on the alert for the next hour or so anyhow. What did you estimate the winds in this particular one at? Uh, we... Probably had a wind measurement here. Let me check just a moment. We got one on the ground. Well, we're talking with John Burke, who is chief meteorologist for the Louisville National Weather Service. Stand by just a moment, Glenn. All right. Uh, three knot winds here at the airport, translated into miles per hour, a little over 80. So we uh, could well be counting up some damage before oh, too I'm long. Oh, sure. Ago. Yeah. Uh, and I, Dave Reeve just mentions another storm at uh, on the ground on the ground at Elizabethtown, and uh, just about as strong as the one we had here. And that one's also moving east northeast, about 45 miles an hour. All right, so right now we have three storms active, one around Elizabethtown moving to the east-northeast, another one that is moving toward Mount Washington, and one just moving out of eastern Jefferson County. Right. Will this one in eastern Jefferson County, by chance, John, skip the river and go into southern Indiana? Uh, the way it's headed now, it looks like it'll stay on this side of the river for a while, yet it isn't moving that much toward the northeast. I would thank people and persons in Oldham and Trimble and Henry County. Uh, I hate to mention that term, Henry County, but nevertheless, those areas are uh, in the path of this activity headed off to the east here. Okay, John. Uh, why don't we just keep this line open, if we might, and uh, if you have something to add, you can really pick it up and we can get straight on the air. Okay. Uh, right. You want to just hang on here then, huh? All right, fine. Uh, Jeff, I think Chuck Paddock just walked in with probably some additional information from the police. Well, the so. only thing we have at this point from the police is that they have cited that tornado and that it is moving, they say, in the direction at this point uh, of the St. Matthews area, and they uh, warn people in the St. Matthews area to take cover at this time. They say the storm, from their indications, is still as strong as it was when it passed over the airports in southern Louisville. So the St. Matthews area is the next area people should be concerned about. If they live right. out there, they should take cover as of, like, right now. Right. Uh-huh. Okay, are we, uh, shall we proceed here? Uh, just as soon as you have any more information, we'll cut back in and uh, bring everybody up to date. All right? Sounds like a good idea. Okay. Aristides in 1875. <laughs> Whirl away in 1941. <laughs> Secretariat in 1973. <laughs> and this year, the 100th running of the world's greatest horse race. To celebrate, First National Bank brings you a set of official 1974 Derby glasses, the same as sold at Churchill Downs. Six glasses listing every Derby winner since 1875. 
The set is yours for just $3.50, tax included, when you open a new checking or savings account for $50, or add $50 to an existing savings account. This year, see the 100th running with a new set of glasses. A set of six in a carton suitable for mailing, while supply lasts, at all 38 branches of First National Bank. All right, if uh, Dick Gilbert can hear us in Skywatch 84, let's uh, go up there right now for a, a report from his vantage point. Well, I guess they're, uh, they're talking on that, uh, on that system right now. Well, to repeat at this time what we have going, Jeff, because uh, people may have been moving to their basements to take cover and may have missed some of the things. We still have the storm in Jefferson County. It's moving into the St. Matthews area at this time. A rather intense storm uh, at the airport, uh, funnel cloud sighted as it moved across that area, and that's the same storm system. We also have a report of a storm on the ground at Elizabethtown moving toward the east-northeast, about the same intensity as the storm which has passed over Jefferson County. And in the Mount Washington area, another strong storm moving into Mount Washington, and that is uh, as intense as the storm which we had in this area. And people should be on the alert in Mount Washington until about 545 this afternoon. And that's what we have, three storm systems moving across this area. All right. Uh, I, I don't know about, uh, let's see if we can do anything with Dick Gilbert here. I think he is on another line checking with, well, we just to make sure I've got the right buttons here. Dick Gilbert in Skywatch 84, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. I've been talking to the newsroom, Jeff. I'm right over the fairgrounds. First of all, let's talk about traffic. This tornado touched down right here at the uh, horse barns on the north-south expressway, and it has turned over several cars, and uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I would say eight automobiles have been blown across the road or turned over. There's an ambulance here uh, working in the road. Traffic northbound is moving and trickling through here one at a time. Southbound, uh, well, yes, the same thing, getting way over on the shoulder. Now, the wind damage hit the roof of Freedom Hall, and it tore three big holes in the roof. Then it moved over on the eastern uh, end of the building and ripped off about a third of the roof here. The horse barns are no more. It totally wiped out the horse barns. All of the mobile homes and trailers behind the uh, Freedom Hall have been uh, completely torn up. And over by the, uh, I think it's the Twilight Drive in here, we've had about four trailers uh, completely torn apart. There is fire equipment and emergency equipment in there. Now, be very careful. On Crittenden Drive, I see uh, more police cars and emergency equipment heading down toward the trailer park there that's just off the southwest corner. Apparently, this is where the uh, twister first touched down, and uh, this really caused a problem. Avoid that north-south expressway. They can only get one or two cars through it at a time and uh, try and use some other route. That's the way it looks from up here. Dick Gilbert, Dick, Skywatch 84. This is Chuck Paddock. Can you see the storm at this time from your viewpoint? Uh, in the no eastern longer, part of the... Chuck. The only dark area I see is, uh, oh, let's see. I would put that out uh, beyond Indian Hills on the river heading toward, say, Harrods Creek at this moment. I'm looking back now the other direction, looking for this uh, other one you mentioned at Elizabethtown. And... Uh, it still looks clear down the river there past uh, West Point. There is a gray area over toward Fort Knox. That's the way it looks now. We're in the uh, we're in a kind of a clear area at the moment. Okay, we'll be checking back with you in uh, about five minutes shortly after 5 o'clock. We will uh, have the news at 5 o'clock, and uh, there is much news today. Not I might also mention something that I've just learned, and, and uh, I don't want to step on you, Jeff, but we've got all kinds of information pouring in. Uh, WHAS and WHAS-FM are now simulcasting. That means the same weather information is being heard both on AM and FM. So if you're having problems with your AM radio because of static or something, uh, we are also on FM, WHAS, at this time with the weather information. Okay. Now, going back a second, from what Dick Gilbert told us, there was some damage out at the fairgrounds. There were a number of cars that were uh, blown across the uh, roadway, and he said somebody was working in a, uh, uh, from an ambulance out there. Uh, yes, Van Vance is here and has a, a word. Right. I, I just talked to Gordon Crawford of the Colonels who was at the Executive Inn and has gone to the fairgrounds. He says there is debris inside Freedom Hall on the floor. There's water on the floor, 15-foot holes in the ceiling, and he doesn't see how there could be a basketball game played there tonight. 
it hasn't uh, been officially called off, but uh, it might even be a problem having a basketball game there tomorrow night at Freedom Hall. We'll have some of his comments in just a moment. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jeff, you want to regroup for about two minutes here, and then we'll come back with some more weather information. How's that? All right, we have the news coming up at 5 o'clock. In the meantime, let's sort of pull back and relax and listen to some music, and if anything happens while that's on, we'll interrupt, and you'll know about it first, all right? So it's Gladys Knight. County police officers with 24-hour patrol cars should report immediately to their district substations, and all members of the Kentucky State Police who live in the Louisville area are to call the Elizabethtown Post. That's all state policemen who live in the Louisville area should call the state police post at Elizabethtown. The time is one minute before 6 o'clock. This is WHAS News. I'm Byron Crawford, and along with Glenn Baston and Chuck Paddock and uh, a host of other reporters who come in now and then, we're trying to keep you posted as best we can on the situation in the wake of the tornado which hit Louisville and Jefferson County, southern Indiana, and other counties around Louisville this afternoon. Suburban Hospital here in Louisville reports that at least 25 persons have been received for treatment of injuries suffered in the storm which hit the metro area this afternoon. The hospital says the injuries are of varying degree and that more injured are coming in. Again, Suburban Hospital, one of the hospitals out in the eastern section of the county, Near I-64 says at least 25 persons have been received for treatment of injuries and that more are coming in. General Hospital now tells us that they have received seven injuries as a result of the storm which moved through Louisville and Jefferson County this afternoon. In Indiana, at least 11 persons are known dead. 25 to 30 more are said to have been injured, but those are only preliminary figures. The authorities in Indiana, more than one, have asked for... National Guard assistance, and we can assume that uh, we'll hear something shortly from Governor Otis Bowen of Indiana. Governor Ford of Kentucky told Glenn Baston a few minutes ago, and that was later reaffirmed by County Judge Todd Hollenbach, that the National Guardsmen and policemen in Louisville and Jefferson County are out in force to do what they can to help you, and most of all to protect the property that was damaged make sure that uh, it's not looted and what have you. Meantime, if you don't have to be on the roadways, stay off. And if you don't have to make a telephone call, don't. And if you don't have to take a shower, don't take a shower or even drink water because uh, we are uh, experiencing problems with the water supply. The tornado apparently scored a direct hit on the water company's pumping station in Crescent Hill this afternoon. We just talked with Frank Campbell, the chief engineer for the Louisville Water Company, and he told us that uh, we have something in the neighborhood of eight hours water supply left. No problem, he says, providing people conserve water as best they can. And that means that uh, if we don't have to use it unnecessarily, please uh, remember what he said and don't try to uh, store a huge amount of water up because that's going to damage... uh, the efforts completely. If you uh, don't have to use the phone, as we said, don't use it because the lines are being tied up with calls to the Weather Bureau and what have you. Uh, We're well aware of uh, extensive damage in Louisville and Jefferson County, and uh, news people and authorities are out in force now trying to find out where the hardest-hit areas were, and there will be help there sometime within the next few hours, we can assume. This is WHAS News. The time is two minutes past six. We might point out to those of you who probably uh, uh, are tuning in or some of you are tuning in to hear the world tonight, we are going to preempt that broadcast because of the weather situation in Kentuckiana so that we can continue to update that information. Uh, The situation, is this Alderman Gentry? Uh, this is Glenn Baston at WHAS Radio, and we are on the air live, sir. Could I put you on the air and ask you from your command post uh, what the situation looks like? Uh, I'll be glad to. All right. You were, uh, I understand, talked with Governor Ford a little bit earlier and did ask for some guard assistance within the city. Is that, that correct? That is right. Where are the hardest-hit areas from your command post? Uh, well, uh, around the fairground and, uh, is the worst, I believe. Where are you asking that the guard be directed to? Uh, they were directed to go straight to the fire ground. Okay. Do you, uh, have you placed a request for where they might be dispatched after they uh, are assembled at the fairgrounds? No. We are just, uh, we're dispatch them to the, the most uh, places they are needed when they get there. Do you have any indication, sir, of uh, injuries and things of that nature? Well, uh, about 100 so far, as I've got a check on. 
Within the city limits. Within the city limits, yeah. We are of the opinion that uh, within the city, probably the area around Seneca Park was the hardest hit. Does uh, that, uh, Seneca Park and uh, around Eastern Parkway, Barstown Road and Lexington Road was uh, the hardest place it was hit. And I've got uh, heavy equipment on the way out there now to clean out and help to get it where we can get started moving again. And... Uh, I just got a call from a water company that they uh, almost wiped out in the east section of the Louisville on water, and we've asked everybody if they'll cut down on the water as much as possible. Alderman Gentry, are you having any problems with sightseers? Uh, well, we always have trouble with that. What about, uh, we, we are also told that uh, there may be some difficulties with the telephones. Uh, have you had any indication of that? We have no indication of that, none whatsoever. Okay, Alderman, thank you much for talking with us. We'll yes. let you get back to work now. Okay, thank you. Alderman Gentry, who is uh, acting mayor, Mayor Sloan is out of town. I don't know whether he's on vacation. I think maybe he is taking a vacation. But uh, uh, he, too, has asked for National Guard assistance within the city of Louisville. Uh, he seems to think that, uh, as, as everyone else does, that the eastern area of the city is the hardest hit. I guess we could uh, run down for you, uh, uh, Byron, if you have available to you there among the papers we have piled up, what the latest situation with these warnings and things of that nature is. Uh, quite possibly we have John Burke coming back in on the line there, Jeff. If you would check it, please. It's five minutes past six o'clock uh, from WHAS Louisville. Again, let us repeat, please do not use water unless you have to. Do not use the telephone unless you have to. We have been asked to urge all members of Headquarters Battalion, 23rd Artillery Corps, to report to the Fairgrounds Armory immediately. All members of the Headquarters Battalion of the 23rd Artillery reporting to the Fairgrounds immediately. All Jefferson County police officers with the 24-hour patrol cars should report immediately to their district substations. All Jefferson County 24-hour patrol members to their district substations. If your area of the city was not affected, or your area of the metropolitan area of Louisville, was not affected by this storm, please do not tonight go out to those areas that were. These uh, emergency vehicles and those people who are attempting to clean up uh, the devastation that was caused by the storm uh, simply cannot afford for you to be in their way. If you have uh, uh, any curiosity, please save it for uh, some time later in the week. Now let's go to Byron and, and, and get an update on uh, this storm situation. All right, Glenn, we don't mean to sound redundant with the tornado warnings, watches, and severe thunderstorm uh, advisories and what have you, but I think in light of what happened here today, and it's our practice, and we've always uh, given people the information until the watches and warnings were canceled, we have no cancellations yet on these. A tornado warning is still in effect for Oldham, Shelby, Henry, Trimble, Franklin, and Owen counties in Kentucky until about 6.30, or uh, roughly 25 minutes from now. A tornado warning is still in effect until 6.30 for persons in Nelson, Anderson, Woodford, Franklin, Scott, Fayette, and Jessamine counties in Kentucky. John Burke of the Weather Service, the last time he spoke with us, told us that that storm was uh, on its way, he thought, uh, directly toward Frankfort, Kentucky. No report on whether it's reached that vicinity yet, but you folks in Franklin County and Scott County should be on the alert, as well as uh, people in the metro Lexington area. A tornado warning still in effect until 7.30 Eastern Daylight Time for persons in Boone County, Kentucky, and Hamilton County, Ohio, just across the river at Cincinnati. This just handed me a tornado warning is in effect for the following two areas of Kentucky, and this is a fresh bulletin. A tornado was reported shortly before 6 in Hart County, moving toward the northeast. Now, this area affected by the warning will include the counties of Hart, Green, Taylor, Marion, and Casey. So we're moving on from the uh, Frankfurt area now with this uh, tornado warning into the west-central Kentucky area. Again, a tornado warning is in effect for the following two areas of Kentucky. A tornado was reported shortly before 6 in Hart County. It was moving toward the northeast. The area affected by the warning includes the counties of Hart, Green, Taylor at Campbellsville, Marion at Lebanon, and Casey at Liberty, Kentucky. The tornado was reported south of Frankfort at 6 p.m., and a warning is in effect, as we told you, for these counties, Franklin, Scott, Woodford, Fayette, Owen, Grant, 
and Harrison. So they have now included Grant on up I-75 uh, toward Cincinnati and Harrison in the Cynthiana vicinity in that tornado warning which uh, covers Frankfort. So we have two warnings, one for the west-central Kentucky counties of Hart, Green, Taylor, Marion, and Casey, and one uh, for the counties on east and north of Franklin, Scott, Woodford, Fayette, Owen, Grant, and Harrison. Now the National Weather Service has issued a tornado watch meaning that conditions are right for a tornado to develop for a portion of extreme southern Indiana and uh, a portion of uh, western Kentucky. The threat of tornadoes and severe thunderstorms with large hail and damaging winds will exist in these areas from now until 11 tonight. The greatest threat of tornadoes and severe thunderstorms is in an area along and 70 miles either side of a line from Evansville, Indiana to Greenwood, Mississippi. If you have a ruler or yardstick and you want to compute that, put the uh, ends of the yardstick uh, on Evansville, Indiana, and Greenwood, Mississippi, and uh, figure 70 miles either side of that line, and that's where the greatest threat of tornadoes and severe thunderstorms will exist until 11 tonight. Of course, persons in or close to any of the tornado watch or warning areas that we just gave you are advised to be on the watch for local weather developments and prepare to move to a place of safety if threatening conditions are sighted. Eleven persons known dead in Indiana, well over 25 or 30 injured. The report's, of course, yet incomplete. We know of at least, uh, oh, uh, in the neighborhood of 20 injuries that have been received by hospitals, two hospitals in Jefferson County, and the acting mayor told us a few moments ago that he's heard of at least 100 admissions to hospitals around Louisville. Now, Chuck Paddock, what do you have? We've got somebody uh, that we've been talking to on and off at several of the hospitals, and as you know, they are busy. Uh, I think it might be wise, even though we may have just said this a little while ago, uh, it's kind of strange here at 6.10 in the afternoon to walk through the lobby of WHAS. We've got the sun shining. Uh, It looks beautiful out there, but uh, a matter of two hours ago, we were in the midst of, uh, oh, less than that, matter of fact, an hour and a half ago, in the midst of a tornado. Uh, I think it bears repeating that the water supply in Louisville is critical at this time. We have, at best, uh, eight hours supply, uh, and the water system is asking anyone, uh, residences, industries, to curtail water usage because uh, that eight-hour supply can be stretched to a full day if we're judicious with it and if we uh, use it very slowly. Uh, Also, uh, we've still got reports that uh, the uh, police uh, are in as many sections of the city of Louisville that were hit as possible, uh, and their phone company is still requesting people not use the phone any more than necessary. Uh, We have had several reports from areas where they say, well, uh, we've been trying to reach so-and-so at a nursing home or something. Uh, it, It... in many cases, is impossible to call across town. We've made several attempts to do that, and the phone system is not working that well. Uh, you would be wise to uh, to not try and call if you're concerned about somebody who lives across town, and let the emergency calls get through first. Uh, by this evening, you know, hopefully we would have things in better condition. Uh, we might also point out that tonight at 7:30 on Radio 84, in place of Spectrum, uh, we will be having a full wrap up of uh, what has happened this afternoon in. Uh, southern Indiana, and across the state of Kentucky. At this point, uh, we uh, have been talking about uh, weather conditions uh, in the state, and uh, it is wise to repeat that until 8 o'clock tonight, people will uh, be under a tornado watch, which means conditions are right for uh, activity to uh, start up, and uh, people should be on the alert. Byron? All right. Uh, thank you, Chuck, and thank you for the updated information. I think it's probably more critical than most of us uh, would want to believe this water situation, yet we shouldn't be alarmed about it. The water company knows what it can do with what it has at this moment. It says it has a roughly an eight-hour supply. The problem is uh, the equipment at the Crescent Hill pumping station, a very vital pumping station in the Louisville and Jefferson County area, has to be repaired, and we have to give them time to do it. So, as Chuck said, uh, the more judiciously we use our water, uh, the longer we'll all have to uh, have a drink and use it for what we have to have it for. Glenn Bastin, uh, you've been in touch with the Weather Service most of the afternoon. Uh, What do we have now? Byron, uh, John Burke is getting a briefing from his people right at the moment. He is on the line, and as soon as he gets 
the latest from all of the meteorologists that he has uh, on duty out at the National Weather Service. We will get the latest from him. I might uh, point out something that is unexplained to us at the moment. We don't really know what it is, but we have had here in the studio, they have had in the newsroom, and they have had at our switchboard here, WHAS, numerous reports of a tremor in the south end. Now, what this is, whether or not it is... uh, Uh, Some side effect of the winds or uh, something of that nature, we don't know. It is, quite honestly, at this moment, unexplained. But uh, we are getting reports from the south end, uh, the southern sections of Jefferson County, that they have had some sort of tremor. And for those of you who are located out there, as soon as we can uh, track this down and uh, get some explanation for it, we will uh, uh, give you that information. Well... Uh, something that we wish we did not have to report to you. Bob Johnson has just told us that there are at least seven known dead in Kentucky as a result of the tornadoes, including one in Jefferson County. The death in Jefferson County reported from the city civil defense headquarters. We have no other details on that. The state police say that there are two known dead at Elizabethtown, three near Irvington and Meade County, another near Samuels and Nelson County. In addition, a spot check of hospitals in Louisville and Jefferson County tell of at least 50 people injured. And, of course, we had the acting mayor on the air uh, just a little while ago saying that there may be as many as 100 people injured. Well, John Burke has joined us again. Uh, John, what's it look like now? Well, Glenn, right now, uh, radar is showing a, a well-developed storm down around Danville. Probably not as bad as the one that went through here. Nevertheless, it is a sizable storm, a dangerous storm. It's moving east-northeast between 50 and 60 miles an hour. That would take it to somewhere around the Richmond area, on over into the oh, Madison County, Clark County, on over in that area, the Richmond, Kentucky area. And the other one apparently moved uh, near Frankfurt. Whether or not it went across the city, we cannot say. It is east of Frankfurt now, oh, 10 miles or so east of Frankfurt, heading in the direction of Georgetown, Paris, in that direction, but uh, certainly... I'm not trying to indicate it's going to strike those towns, but in that general direction, so persons in those areas, that's east of Frankfurt, over in the Georgetown, Paris areas, on up into, that would be in Bourbon County, and on up into Harrison and Nicholas and Bath County. They're moving so rapidly, 50 or 60 miles in there. And the other one that's around Danville, also east-northeast, 50 to 60 miles in there, would take it over into Madison County in the neighborhood of Richmond and on across into Clark, Powell, Estelle County, Montgomery County, and there's just uh, so much going on. It's just, what can I say except uh, we're just going to have to be alert throughout the evening in the eastern part of the state at the present time, northeast part, I would say, in the area from uh, well, perhaps Richmond on up northward through the Lexington, Georgetown area, and on eastward, uh, east of those areas. For the next uh, oh, several hours, anyhow, I was just thinking in terms of 60 miles an hour across there, And now we've been issued another tornado watch for the area in West Kentucky, another area, tornado watch area, which it extends across western Kentucky up to near the Louisville area. Now, bear in mind, this is only a watch area, but developments can be expected in that area. John, these things seem to be skipping around quite a bit, do they not? Well, we've had about, uh, uh, I'm going to say five or six very, very well-developed cells on the radar and uh, they've been boiling up, dying down, and uh, we see nothing to the west of us now for the present, but we're going to be on the alert. And as you say, they've been, they've been hitting down in so many different areas. And uh, there is pattern to them, but it is not the well-defined pattern we're normally accustomed to. We're just getting them every place, which is, uh, it is rather unusual. I certainly am not out of the uh, realm of possibility, but quite an unusual configuration this afternoon, which has made it difficult to keep up with them, and uh, certainly we're having our problems trying to get the warnings out, but I just want to remind people once again to be on the alert, and as I say, the areas to the east of Louisville, Georgetown, Lexington areas, Richmond area, and on east of there for the next uh, few hours, anyhow. Take the precautions that have been mentioned earlier. There's uh uh, there's nothing to lose by at least doing that. No, uh, not at all. Uh, these things are moving quite rapidly. Of course, at 60 miles an hour, you don't have much warning, but I would certainly be on the alert for something coming in from the west. But they, they're right on top of you before you know it. A lot of people might think, John, I, I would imagine that you could probably see one of these storms coming and uh, have a considerable amount of time. But as evidenced uh, in Campbellsburg earlier this week, that's not the case, is uh, it? Well, that's the, they had the same situation there. That storm was moving about 50, 60 miles an hour. So you can visualize coming down, coming on right down towards you at 60 miles an hour. You don't have much time to 
to operate, and that we're going to have to be especially alert this evening because these storms are moving so rapidly. Right now in downtown Louisville, we have sunshine. Well, it's trying to poke through out here. Blue sky all over the place and looks pretty good, but uh, we, we did have some damage around the airport out here, and uh, I heard you mention damage around the city earlier. Well, apparently we have been very hard hit in many areas of the city. Uh, John, I'll let you get back to your radar screen. Thank oh, you. Okay, Glenn, thank you. Again, let me uh, report this unfortunate, uh, really unfortunate side of this story, and that in Indiana we have at least 11 confirmed deaths. In Kentucky now, seven are known dead as a result of the afternoon tornadoes. One Jefferson County death reported by uh, City Civil Defense Headquarters. Two known dead at Elizabethtown. Three near Irvington in Meade County. Another near Samuels in Nelson County. Uh, we are told that the hospitals are receiving uh, numerous injuries in the immediate metropolitan area. Uh, I think you have an update on that even, Byron Crawford. Well, not really. I have a little piece of good news here, Glenn. Uh, and I would, before I give it to you, I think I'd like to say that uh, if you have relatives in the areas mentioned where we did have deaths, uh, probably it would be better to wait until authorities can notify you. Uh, if you don't hear something, then you, I think, can assume that you are not, uh, your family was not uh, in the fatal list. But... Uh, in situations like this, the initial reaction is to immediately panic and call and see what you can get. Try to wait a few hours and see if anyone contacts you. If not, then it's fair to assume that uh, at least if they were hurt, then probably they survived the injuries. And uh, at any rate, sometime tonight or early tomorrow morning, uh, things should be reaching a state of normalcy, provided we have no more uh, terrible weather, and the authorities should let you know. This bit of good news at the St. Mark's Episcopal Day Care Center uh, on Frankfurt Avenue, and that was one of the areas that was hardest hit in Louisville. The day care kids, uh, parents are not to worry. They're fine. And uh, apparently still at the day care center. That's for the St. Mark's Episcopal Day Care Center on Frankfurt, area, uh, Frankfurt Avenue, one of the areas hardest hit by the storm. Glenn, what do you have? Well, that was indeed good news. We told you earlier that we have been getting several reports of uh, earth tremors in the area, somewhat unexplained, and they still are unexplained to us, but we have Mrs. Ann Evans on the phone from Galena, Indiana, and she, too, experienced one of these. Uh, Ms. Evans, what did it feel like? Well, I was laying on the couch listening to all the tornado news from Louisville, and it just shook the whole house just for about three or four seconds, and I was laying where I could see the doorway, and it just shook. It was just really odd. It made you feel kind of funny. <laughs> we had some reports from uh, the southern sections of Jefferson County that the dishes were rattling and things of that nature. Did that happen at your house? No, uh, just the door shook, and the whole house just shook on its foundation. And I, I went to the door. My little boy was outside playing with the dog, and I asked him if he heard anything or felt anything, and he said, no, he didn't. And he was right by the house, but it shook the whole house. Of course, we have a basement, mm -hmm. and part of it is on rock. What time did this occur? Just approximately 10 minutes ago. So it's been about 6, 10. How long did it last? Oh, just for, oh, I'd say three or four seconds. Did you have uh, any indication of, of uh, stormy conditions in your area? Uh, well, of course, we've had all this wind, and there's lightning, uh, but not close, mm -hmm. off in the distance. Ms. Evans, thank you for calling us. Okay. Uh -huh. We're now at 22 minutes past 6. WHAS Radio uh, will continue to broadcast the information that we have available to us uh, as, as long as additional information continues to come in. It has been some time since we pointed out that the water company is having problems. Uh, they hit the power. Uh, the, the storm knocked out the power to the water company, the main pumping station in Crescent Hill. That means all the water we have is uh, what was stored at the time. They say that should last for about eight hours. Now, we would, of course, uh, hope to have that power back on before that time is up, but um, we don't know. So conserve water as much as you possibly can. Uh, use it very sparingly. We are also asking you to limit your use of the telephone. The telephone company says that uh, their circuits are jammed by people attempting to call the weather service, people attempting to call uh, here and there to their friends and to their relatives to see if, if they were hurt or injured. Uh, the information is just not going to be available to you from all we can learn. We will pass on to you every single word that we can get uh, here at uh, WHA. Yes. 
I understand that uh, our man Jim West, who has been circling through southern Indiana, is uh, standing by for communication, Jeff, by two-way radio. Jim, if you're monitoring me, come on in. Okay, Glenn. Uh, I am currently in New Albany. Uh, I just came from uh, Floyd County Memorial Hospital, where at least 35 people have been treated. At least seven have been uh, admitted to the hospital with injuries from the Borden, Palmyra uh, area this afternoon. I did visit Palmyra earlier. There is a about a, a mile and a half wide path of destruction from New Salisbury through Palmyra up into the Borden area. And uh, the time I visited there, uh, the homes I saw on either side of uh, State Road 150 were totally destroyed. Buildings lifted up off their foundation and completely flattened uh, hundreds of yards away. So indeed, a tornado did strike through that vicinity. Uh, we have no reports of any uh, fatal injuries at this point. Most of them, the injuries um, have been uh, treated and released at, at uh, Floyd County Hospital. Others have been taken to Harrison County Hospital and one in Washington County. Some are being airlifted by helicopter over to Clark County Hospital. So it will be a while before we have a total figure on the injuries from the southern Indiana uh, tornado this afternoon. However, at this point, it appears that uh, there are no fatalities uh, in the uh, southern Indiana area from the Palmyra and in particular. Now in Borden, Indiana, it seems the hardest hit area was a place called Daisy Hill Subdivision. Uh, reports from the scene indicate that all the homes in that vicinity were leveled. This is Jim West for in New Albany. This is Byron Crawford, WHAS News. I've been here with Glenn Baston and Chuck Paddock this afternoon, and we're trying to keep you posted on what's happening uh, as things happen very quickly in Louisville and Jefferson County, and uh, storms now move into the central Kentucky area around Richmond. We want to ask you to be on the alert if you're in the Richmond, uh, Frankfort areas, on up into Grant County and the Cynthiana vicinity, and even you folks in Casey County and uh, uh, Taylor County down in there. There are two cells apparently still working in Kentucky, both of them extremely strong cells. We hesitate to say whether they are actual tornadoes, but they can cause extensive damage. At least uh, two twisters apparently made their way through the Louisville and Jefferson County areas uh, in some form this afternoon and have left widespread damage and many, many persons injured in uh, Indiana and Kentucky, at least seven reported dead in Kentucky, and 11 confirmed dead in Indiana. Now, another aspect is the continuing amount of reports we're receiving on tremors. I just talked to a lady on the phone who lives in the Candlelight subdivision who said uh, she experienced the same kind of tremor at her home as was felt in the Galena, Indiana area. And the lady you heard on the air a few minutes ago, Chuck Paddock, just came in with a piece of uh, copy. Chuck, what do you have? Byron, apparently those earth tremors are rather widespread throughout uh, perhaps a three-state area. Uh, minor tremors have been reported from Evansville to Indianapolis in Indiana this afternoon. The tremor was reported from Elwood in the north, down through Indianapolis to Bloomington to Evansville in southern Indiana, then across to Henderson, Kentucky, spreading west through Terre Haute, Sullivan, Clinton, and into Marshall, Illinois. And, of course, the reports that we've had here in the metro Louisville of earth tremors. Uh, this is the first time in my recollection over the past uh, decade or so of watching tornadoes and severe storms we've ever had an earth tremor associated with a severe thunderstorm and a tornado. And I really don't know what the explanation would be from the Weather Service, but it apparently has happened because there are so many reports of an earth tremor, uh, and it has happened within an hour and a half of a time when we've had severe weather and a very strong tornado which passed across Jefferson County, Metro Louisville, with winds up to 80 miles an hour and above. Uh, it'll be interesting in, a, in at least several hours by the time uh, I'm sure the Earthquake Center uh, will be working on that and will have some kind of uh, explanation, I would hope, as to why we've had these tremors. Byron? Well, in a way, Chuck, we may be fortunate in that uh, there is a seismograph, as I understand it, at the uh, Indiana University at Bloomington. I would assume that they... Uh, are at work now trying to pinpoint uh, where the center of the tremor was and uh, just how extensive it was and what it measured on the Richter scale, which is the thing they use to tell how serious uh, an earthquake or an earth tremor is. I might add, to minimize the reports of earth tremors, that, uh, uh, as we all know, they can be either man-made or natural, and uh, I would hope that some of them in the Louisville area at least are uh, natural, 
I would hope, or, or man-made, I would hope that um, maybe they're the result of possibly some sort of uh, after effect of the storm, such as we've had some explosions reported. That could have been uh, possibly what you felt. We've also had some very uh, heavy thunderstorm activity in parts of Kentucky, and uh, the thunderstorms can sometimes rock the earth. Glenn, what do you have? Well, I'd like to give you some idea of what we're going to do with our program schedule here on WHAS, uh, Byron. We're going to continue on the air as long as it is necessary to keep you informed of what's going on. Then we're going to switch to Milton Metz. Milton will uh, change his topic tonight, and he will accept your uh, calls on on what went on in your area this afternoon. Uh, We, of course, in the WHAS newsroom will continue to watch the situation and will report throughout uh, Milton's program. Uh, Our information will continue on a nonstop basis from uh, the news desk here, and uh, once we get get through this uh, uh, point of urgency where they thunderstorms and things of this nature have dissipated, then we'll switch over to Milton for uh, his receiving of your calls concerning what happened in your area. Uh, Bud Harbsmeyer just walked in. Bud? As you know, a portion of the National Guard has been alerted and called to active duty by the governor. They were supposed to meet at uh, their armory. However, we have reports that they can't get to the armory, and they are to meet now at U.S. 42 and Pennington Lane. U.S. 42 and Pennington Lane, members right, of the Guard Bud. who have been activated. All right, uh, you members of the National Guard who have been called out, uh, keep that in mind because it's of utmost importance. Uh, if you cannot get to the armory, and apparently many of you can't, then the... Uh, Point to rally is at U.S. 42 and Pennington Lane. All patients at Northfield Nursing Home are well. There has been damage, but all patients are well. Watterson College canceled classes. U of L University College canceled, and of course, I think we can assume without going into the cancellation business that almost everything is canceled tonight. Uh, I would uh, pass this message along to some of you anxious parents, and I wish we could uh, pass uh, good news along to all of you who might be worried and might not be with your children but particularly those at the St. Mark's Episcopal Daycare Center on Frankfurt Avenue, uh, where the storm uh, really left some serious damage. The kids are okay, so don't worry about them. Uh, we'll, you can make arrangements, but uh, the kids are fine at the St. Mark's Episcopal Daycare Center on Frankfurt Avenue. Chuck Paddock is on the phone, and I assume that Chuck... Uh, all right, we'll stay with it here. This is WHAS News. The time is uh, 6.31. You're listening to WHAS in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Things happen so unbelievably fast this afternoon that it really is difficult to uh, keep your finger on what's going on. To recount briefly, Governor Ford uh, indicated to us that he is trying to divide up the National Guardsmen around the state as best he can to see that all areas which suffered serious damage receive relief, especially those areas where the damage could result in some looting and what have you. The same is uh, probably true in Indiana, where uh, Governor Otis Bowen has been asked to call out the Indiana National Guard. Seven known deaths in Kentucky, 11 known dead in Indiana, and uh, we have at least 100 being treated in Louisville area hospitals, uh, 35 or so at the Floyd County Memorial Hospital over on the Indiana side, and uh, seven are being admitted to the hospital there. But Jim West tells us that so far he's heard of no fatalities there. I believe, and if you'll pardon me while I get the sheet, I believe that uh, there was one death in Jefferson County. We have no details, no names yet, of anyone who was uh, injured or killed in Kentucky. As we say, at least seven are known dead in the Commonwealth as a result of the tornadoes. Uh, The state police say there are two known dead around Elizabethtown, three near Irvington in Meade County, where the tornado came through Breckenridge and Meade counties and uh, tore up some homes down there. Another death was reported near Samuels in Nelson County, and that was another tornado or another storm system that moved uh, from the Bernheim Forest area through Nelson County down through Washington, Spencer, and uh, that area, and now is centered somewhere in the Richmond vicinity. Be on the alert if you're in the Richmond area or the Grant County, Franklin County area, as well as the counties of of um, Hart and Casey, and Taylor, and Green, because there's a tornado also in your vicinity and could come your way. Glenn Baston? Well, I have on the line right now, Byron, uh, St. Louis University, the Department of Geology, and, uh, beg your pardon? 
Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. I beg your pardon, our telephone listing is outdated. But uh, when I ask, uh, when I merely introduce myself, you ask, did I feel the earthquake? What have we had? Uh, you've had an earthquake of approximately magnitude 4.5 on the Richter scale. Uh, our recordings of it so far indicate it occurred about 130 miles to the east of St. Louis, which had put it in uh, southern Illinois, most likely. Uh, this is the largest earthquake in this area since the uh, 1968 earthquake, uh, November 9th. And uh, we've got felt reports from uh, uh, the St. Louis area, uh, Springfield, Illinois, and now Louisville, Kentucky also. Uh, what Do you have any idea what sort of radius is involved in this? Uh, over how large an area it'll be felt? Uh, it should be felt in uh, most of the six or seven states surrounding uh, Illinois. I don't think it should be felt any farther than, say, uh, 200 miles from, but it, uh, from where it occurred, though. It was centered, apparently, in southern Illinois. As far as we can tell right now. We have just gone through a tremendous afternoon here of uh, severe weather. We have a considerable amount of damage. There could be no relation uh, in these two, I'm sure. Is there, would that be cor a correct assumption? Uh, there would be no relation whatsoever to this. Is... Uh, is four point? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Is four point five uh, on the scale serious enough to cause damage? It might possibly cause some slight damage, like uh, perhaps if a dish or something might fall off a table or something like that. It's extremely unlikely that it could cause any damage of any serious sort. Okay, sir. We thank you much. Okay, you're quite welcome. All thank right. That was uh, the uh, what was his formal title? Uh, from the well, he we'll was from else, he's from St. Louis University, where they have uh, a seismograph to measure things like this. And uh, he tells us that there has indeed been an earthquake. Uh, it was centered uh, about 130 miles east of St. Louis. It was in southern Illinois, apparently, and will be felt or was felt in several states. It measured about 4.5 on the scale. Uh, Chuck Paddock has someone new on the line. Chuck, okay, uh, Dave Reed is on the phone with us from the Weather Service. He says they have picked up some new storm activity. Dave, what can you tell us about it? Uh, we have on our radar a very intense echo. Uh, it's about 12 to 13 miles north of Stanford Field, which puts it around Hamburg, Indiana. Uh, that may be on the Clark County, Floyd County line. Uh, it would be moving toward the east-northeast at about 40 to 50 miles an hour. And I would say people in the... Uh, uh, Indiana counties of Scott and Jefferson should be on the alert. And uh, the people on the Kentucky side of the river in Oldham and Trimble County and Carroll County should be on the alert for the next hour. Are you terming this a severe storm or a tornado? We haven't uh, had any reports of uh, from over there. I'm just saying that uh, it uh, uh, is strong enough on our radar that certainly is a severe thunderstorm and it may produce a tornado. Okay, now the activity which is now moving into eastern Kentucky, uh, have you got any word on its intensity at this time? No, uh, we've uh, uh, heard from the state police and they say that, uh, you know, people are reporting touchdowns and they see funnels, but uh, we haven't had any damage reports or anything like that. Okay, good. All right, thank you very much, Dave. All That's Dave Reeves from the Weather Service. Byron? All right, thank you, Chuck, and thank you, David. Uh, it was right interesting at the outset of this uh, dilemma this afternoon that uh, you were on the phone, Chuck, with uh, John Burke at the Weather Service, and uh, Dave Reeves was standing by there at the uh, Weather Service office, and uh, you were discussing the, the situation. Suddenly, uh, John Burke looked up, and Chuck said he could hear a roar over the phone, and uh, uh, John Burke said, oh, my gosh, I've, I, here it comes. Here comes a tornado. And he dropped the phone, and... Uh, uh, sought cover, okay. and uh, <clears throat> it all happened very quickly. I'm sure you remember if you listen to WHAS the uh, the story out of Campbellsburg, uh, Kentucky, the other day, in which the fire chief said it all happened in about 20 seconds. It's hard to believe, but it couldn't have uh, taken much longer than that for the whole thing to pass through a, a given section of Louisville or Jefferson County this afternoon. Uh, Jim West is out somewhere in southern Indiana, I would assume. Now, I'm guessing that if he is, he might be monitoring us. And, Jim, uh, they tell us that there's a strong storm cell over in that area and that uh, there could be some more storm activity in southern Indiana. What is the situation? Is there anything new from where you are? Jim West apparently has made his way back in, but uh, if he has, then Jim will be here shortly with some information from southern Indiana. Jim told us that the damage was severe up in the Palmyra, Borden, Indiana area today. 
There was apparently a roof lifted off uh, the Morgan Township Elementary School, but thanks to uh, quick work by teachers and school officials, no children were hurt up there. However, it was a serious situation in, in Indiana as well as Kentucky, 11 known dead in Indiana, and I'm sure that we're going to get uh, some more reports out of Indiana and Kentucky as to the extent of injuries. Again, and let me uh, find the note that was handed me, you National Guardsmen who are supposed to uh, meet at the armory in Louisville, if you cannot get there, and apparently the roads are in such a shape that some of you can't, you are to meet at U.S. 42 and Pennington Lane. And uh, again, we'll mention for all the state troopers and uh, Jefferson County policemen that uh, you are to call either the district substation, if you're a county policeman, uh, with a 24-hour patrol car, and for you state troopers who live in the Kentuckiana area, get in touch with the Elizabethtown Post of the state police. Civil Defense Headquarters quotes Jefferson County Judge Todd Hollenbach as requesting all persons who are stranded in traffic following the storm to please pull their cars off to the side of the road if at all possible. And that's so emergency equipment and works department personnel can get through to reach the severely damaged areas. Chuck Paddock, do you have something new? What I have, Byron, is um, Fred Welch is on the line for me from Frankfurt. And, uh, Fred, I understand that you saw the storm when it passed through the Frankfurt area, and perhaps you can fill us in on what you saw there. Well, I'll tell you, uh, the way I saw it, uh, of course, I saw it on the radar on television, and so I went up in the second story, and there's a, a door opens up, and so I'm looking out the door and spotting it, and as soon as I spot it over to, I believe it's to the southwest a bit, I uh, I saw the turbulence and I saw it snaking around there and uh, and uh, it, it passed uh, uh, I judge around the uh, interstate on the Kentucky River and came right along there and clipped uh, came through let's say southeast Frankfurt in the vicinity of the interstate uh, intersection with uh, with US 60 uh, more or less between uh, Fort 21 and 60 uh, what's the the uh, locality is known as Jet. So and, does, was uh, there much uh, damage in that area, Fred? Well, sir, that's where the Ramada Inn is, and in, uh, the industrial park. It uh, half demolished the Taylor Tot uh, factory. All telephone poles are down. Trees are uprooted. The, uh, there's a church, uh, a Christian church out there. This roof is off. Of course, we couldn't go very far because of the traffic was tied up with uh, the uh, telephone poles and the trees and everything, but way it looks, it uh, took everything between, well, let's say, uh, between U.S. 421, which is a road to, to Lexington, and the interstate intersection. Okay, thank you very much, Fred Welch. Three miles. Thank you, Fred, for calling from Frankfurt. Okay. Here's Glenn Baston. Right Chuck, I hate to interrupt you, but we have been requested to ask all firemen and policemen in the Frankfurt area to report to work. The Civil Defense Headquarters in Frankfurt tells us that they need ambulances in the Frankfurt area badly. This is all firemen and policemen in the Frankfurt area. Please report to work. They also need ambulances badly, we are told by Civil Defense Headquarters in Frankfurt. Now, we were told by uh, the acting mayor, Alderman Gentry, just a few minutes ago on another line that they are having a considerable uh, amount of trouble with people attempting to sightsee. Please do not go out onto the streets of Louisville. Uh, they need all of the room that they can to move these emergency vehicles around and to get in and out. But I've got the live microphone. Bud Harbsmeyer just walked in again. We've been requested by police in West Point, Kentucky, uh, to ask sightseers to stay off the roads leading to Brandenburg, Kentucky. Brandenburg, Kentucky was hit by a tornado also, apparently quite a bit of damage there. K Kentucky Road 1638 has been closed to all but emergency equipment. And once again, the uh, police at West Point are turning back all sightseers, everything but emergency vehicles headed for Brandenburg, Kentucky. We also have a note from Judge Hollenbach's office uh, requesting that all persons who are stranded in traffic following the storm, please pull your cars off the side of the road if it is at all possible. This will allow the emergency vehicles, the works department personnel, to get through to reach these severely damaged areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you are out, and uh, even if you're not sightseeing, if you've been stuck in the traffic throughout the afternoon, please pull these vehicles off the road so that the emergency equipment 
The Works Department personnel who will clean up the debris can get through to reach the severely damaged area, repeating once again that all firemen and policemen in the Frankfurt area are asked to report to work immediately. We are also told that they need ambulances badly. This from Civil Defense Headquarters in Frankfurt. Byron Crawford? Uh, I think we should perhaps repeat for the benefit of uh, our friends in Frankfurt that the firemen and policemen in Frankfurt, if you are off duty, are asked to report immediately for work. Apparently, uh, part of what we got earlier this afternoon uh, came to Frankfurt uh, a few minutes ago. We just talked with Fred Welch at Frankfurt. He said that uh, he watched the tornado as it came down the Kentucky River, went by Frankfurt and hit uh, part of the city, part of the industrial section, and uh, tore up some buildings and hit places that... uh, There could possibly have been some injuries, and apparently there were. All firemen and policemen, all available firemen and policemen in the city of Frankfurt report immediately for duty. Police in West Point, Kentucky, uh, say that Kentucky 1638 has been closed to all but emergency equipment. This is in order for emergency crews to reach Brandenburg in Meade County, where there was uh, severe damage. The sightseers are being turned away. Chuck? Byron, I have on the phone uh, the acting mayor of Louisville, Melbourne Gentry. Uh, Mr. Gentry, what uh, are you requesting at this point? I would like for everybody that's on the street to get off as quick as possible. And if you don't have to go out, please don't go out. That we can get the heavy equipment through and get our police cars and our emergency vehicles to and from these uh, places where they need to be getting to real quick. Is this effectively a curfew for the city of Louisville? No, no, no. It's no cure for you. It's, uh, we're just asking everybody to help us. We, uh, we need help, and we're going to all have to work together. And if we'll all work together, we can get this cleaned up in just a little while. Okay, let me t- ask you two other questions. Okay. Uh, have you received an update on the number of injured in the metropolitan Louisville area? Well, the last count I had of it was about 150. Okay, now, have there been any deaths in the metro Louisville area? Not as I heard of. Okay. The other thing, has there been any reports of looting or vandalism? No, not yet, and I've been in touch with the police department, been working real close with the police department, and they are getting things in pretty good shape, and we got the uh, National Guards out, and I don't think we'll have any police. Okay, thank you. Melbourne Gentry, the acting mayor of Louisville, while Mayor Sloan is out of town. Byron? Yes, sir. All Uh, right. uh, Thank you, Chuck, and thank you, uh, Mayor Gentry. For those of you who have called concerned about tremors you felt in your homes this afternoon in Indiana and parts of Kentucky, well, you were indeed feeling tremors and the earthquake kind. Uh, The people, the experts in St. Louis who monitor earth tremors say that there was an earthquake that measured 4.5 on the Richter scale, which is a pretty good-sized earthquake. It's the largest since 1968 that we have been able to feel in the Kentuckiana area and the uh, Indiana vicinity. Uh, The center of the quake apparently was around 130 miles east of St. Louis. Uh, This could have been shaky enough to uh, force a dish off a table, perhaps, but so far we've received no reports of damage, and ordinarily when uh, earthquakes happen, we'd receive those reports uh, rather soon. So there was an earth tremor in this area. It was felt in this area. The quake itself apparently was uh, centered some 130 miles east of St. Louis. It's the largest quake we've had uh, and been able to feel in this area since 1968. Again, you firemen and policemen in Frankfurt, if you are off work, then you should be at the station because uh, there are problems in Frankfurt. They've had a serious storm there. Apparently there are people injured. Glenn Baston? On the line right now with us is Civil Defense Headquarters in Frankfurt. Now, we have been asked for the Frankfurt area to uh, urge all firemen and policemen to report to work in the Frankfurt area, and we are also told that they need ambulances there. Uh, Civil Defense Headquarters on the line with us. Would you please, sir, give us a briefing on what the situation is? Okay, apparently for right now we've got a uh, possible uh, touchdown over in the east part of Frankfurt, the, uh, around the Tierra Linda. I know we have one uh, partial uh, church house. The uh, uh, roof of it has been blown away right at the present time. As far as injuries, we know that they are requesting uh, more ambulances for Frankfurt, but uh, no uh, number of injuries at this time. What about around the state? Uh, Any information coming into your office from other regions? Well, we've had uh, several reports of uh, tornado touches down uh, Boyle County, of course, around the Louisville area, 
uh, Brandenburg, uh, Crestwood. Uh, we've had numerous touchdowns throughout the state. I'd say possibly eight to ten. We have had uh, reports of at least seven deaths within the state of Kentucky. Uh, does your information indicate anything worse than that? Okay, at the present time, we have got a tally of eight and, of course, numerous injuries. Do you have the listings of where those came from? Uh, not that I could give you right offhand, no. Is there any other pertinent information that Civil Defense Headquarters uh, thinks should be gotten to the public at this moment? Of course, uh, mainly uh, go ahead and listen to your radio. We uh, uh, have a tornado watch. Most of the danger is past right at the present time, but it could build up, uh, of course, in the future. Go ahead and uh, stay indoors, stay off the streets, try not to drive if possible. They're going to need uh, to utilize the lanes for uh, emergency vehicles. All right, Civil Defense Headquarters in Frankfurt, and uh, we will be checking with you later in the evening. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you, Glenn. Uh, Chuck Paddock has just brought something in. City police say, and this is another good reason to stay off the roads, we have uh, problems on I-65 and I-71. There's a semi-trailer on I-71 at the uh, 65 overpass there with wires on top of it, and it's blocking the entire highway. So that's going to cause some problems for emergency vehicles, and that's a good reason to stay off the streets of Louisville at this time. Byron? All right, thank you, Chuck. Our time is now 10 minutes before 7 o'clock. We're going to break for just a moment, but we'll be right back in a few minutes. And uh, we'll, uh, of course, throughout the evening be passing along information to you. All right, we'll stay with you then. Uh, I think probably we should try to tell people what the uh, changes are tonight. Jeff, do you uh, is the game canceled now? Yes, the game has been canceled tonight because of the damage to Freedom Hall. And according to Van Vance, uh, when he was in here before, they don't even know uh, how long it will take to repair it. It might, in other words, the game tomorrow night is questionable, and indeed uh, three or four days might not be enough. The damage was considerable. So the game is definitely canceled. Our uh, program schedule for the rest of the evening, we will, of course, stay with uh, this important news story, and we will uh, be joining Milton Metz for some telephone calls, some personal observations from our listeners as to what they saw and felt this afternoon. And uh, we'll be getting to that uh, just as uh, when, you know, we feel it is, it is warranted right. to do that when we uh, aren't still in the midst of things. All right, Jeff, thank you. Now, we're going to stay with you, and it, as Jeff said, but it's extremely hard for us to handle cancellations this evening. I think it stands to reason that... Uh, Anything that wasn't of the utmost importance, and by that I mean of an emergency nature, uh, would be canceled this evening. So I see no point in uh, our trying to relay cancellations. If there is some terribly urgent organizational message that we can help you with, of course we'll be glad to. Uh, again, to recap, in case you have missed some of the broadcast. The Louisville Water Company says its main pumping station at Crescent Hill was seriously damaged and uh, that although we have roughly eight hours worth of water left, uh, at best we should be conservative with what we have. So let's, uh, for one night at least, try to skip the showers and so forth and uh, uh, use only what we need for cooking and drinking and so forth. Uh, as far as the telephone company goes, that's always obvious when we have a storm of uh, this proportion, and let's hope we don't have another one like this ever. But uh, the telephone lines are tied up. Uh, there are emergency calls that need to be made in the Frankfurt area now. This also pertains. Firemen and policemen in Frankfurt need to report for work immediately. Ambulances are needed. They had a tornado that was headed for Frankfurt, and a gentleman who lives near Frankfurt said he watched it come down the Kentucky River and tear up some uh, uh, parts of the industrial area there in Frankfurt, and perhaps we have a number of persons injured. Ambulances are needed in that area. We just talked with a civil defense official in Frankfurt, and he tells us that now he has learned that there are at least eight deaths in Kentucky. Of course, the injuries we have no word at all on, except that the acting mayor of Louisville told us a few minutes ago that he knows of at least 150 injured, according to the reports that he's getting from around the metropolitan Louisville area. Jim West told us from southern Indiana a few minutes ago that the Clark County Memorial Hospital had uh, admitted uh, roughly seven persons and had treated something like uh, 35. On up in Indiana, uh, where Jim West was earlier, the cities of Palmyra, Borden, and all the towns in that vicinity uh, 
were damaged, some of them extensively. Uh, the Indiana National Guard, by now, I'm sure, is hard at work, as they are in Kentucky, trying to help people make adjustments in the wake of what has happened. Uh, Chuck? Byron, uh, it sounds like you and I and Glenn Baston are the only three people here, but uh, we have uh, two dozen people back in the newsroom feeding us information, working on the, this continuing story, and they're going to be doing that throughout the night. Also, Monica Kaufman is down at uh, Civil Defense Headquarters in Jefferson County. She was on the line a few minutes ago. We lost her, and we're hoping to get her back so she can give us a direct report. So if she's uh, listening, she might give us a call in again. All right, Chuck, at... Uh at least we know that there have been numerous tornadoes in Kentucky. West Point police advise you not to try to get to the Brandenburg area because uh, that uh, highway situation down there is uh, too much to cope with, and they're going to turn back uh, sightseers, and uh, uh, there is space needed for emergency equipment to get into the Brandenburg vicinity in the Breckenridge County areas. On um, Down in southern Kentucky, around the Danville area, there was a report of a uh, tornado touchdown in Boyle County. We have no reports of any injuries or damage from there yet. Uh, the Frankfurt uh, area seems to be about the hardest hit uh, that we know of now, except for the Louisville and Jefferson County vicinity. Here, the situation could possibly be improving a bit as far as damage goes and uh, what have you. Uh, later on this evening, when people begin to uh, get organized and see exactly what the extent of damage was. Now, we hope that there are city policemen, county policemen, National Guardsmen, and civil defense officials there to help you. And although they have to spread themselves very lightly, I'm sure that they'll try to get to the areas of the greatest need. If your power happens to be off and you're listening to us uh, via transistor, then uh, complaining about it would be almost fruitless at this time because uh, by now the Louisville Gas and Electric Company has every available man out uh, picking up wires. And as Chuck Paddock told you a few minutes ago, we have some vital intersections around Louisville which are tied up due to hot wires in the street. So please, if you do not have to go outdoors, Stay inside, even around uh, your home on foot, perhaps, because you never know when a hot wire's come down and uh, someone might step on it. Glenn? Uh, just had a call from LaGrange, and they're apparently having some difficulty out there with uh, uh, the electricity, Byron. It apparently is off. Many of you have uh, stories to tell that will cause your hair to stand on end probably for some time. Uh, the lady I was just talking with from LaGrange said that uh, the, the tornado actually chased her as she was going home. She had to attempt to outrun it. We would like for you to do that tonight and to give us other information about what happened in your particular area when things slow down just a little bit so that the continuing information is not coming in and, and it has quietened down weather-wise. Uh, we're going to be switching control over to Studio A where Milton Metz is stationed and uh, Milton will be accepting your calls uh, and we will, of course, be providing any additional information that uh, we have. So uh, if you have those stories to tell, please save them. Milton will be looking for them. And it's going to take us a while, quite honestly, to determine everything that has happened. We've uh, tried to, to the best of our ability, give you comments from the governor and various people. Tomorrow morning, uh, beginning at about 5.30, we're going to interrupt normal programming on WHAS again and uh, try to give you a briefing on what happened all over Kentuckyana. Byron? Well, thank you, Glenn. And I might add that uh, while Milton is taking calls from persons who have uh, stories to tell about this afternoon's storm, wherever they might be, be they out of town uh, in southern Indiana or the Louisville area, we'll all be back there working. We're certainly not going home. We'll try to find out exactly what the situation is, and as the evening progresses, we will hopefully be able to give you some concise information as to the extent of damage, uh, injuries, and uh, death in Kentucky and southern Indiana and uh, the rest of the states. Byron, I have a tornado warning in Madison, Clark, Bourbon, Boyle, and Jesmond counties in Kentucky. People should be on the alert for a tornado moving into their area and move to a place of safety immediately if it's sighted. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, <clears throat> these things are so very, very unpredictable that uh, it would behoove all of you in the areas, uh, not only in the counties mentioned, but in those areas, to keep on watch for uh, threatening weather conditions, especially this evening when sighting could be difficult, because uh, if these things happen to strike, uh, then, you know, you're, you've had it if, uh, if it hits directly at uh, your neighborhood. Uh, 
I think perhaps uh, some of you might uh, this evening, if we continue with tornado activity in Kentucky and Indiana, want to uh, take precautions when you go to sleep tonight. Uh, if you normally sleep upstairs in a very uh, weak part of the house, uh, perhaps you might want to go to the basement if you have one or sleep uh, somewhere in the home where uh, you could be safer should uh, threatening conditions move into your area. Again, the tornado warning is in effect until 745 for persons in Boyle County at Danville, Jessamine County at Nicholasville, Fayette County, including the metro Lexington area, Madison at Richmond, and uh, you are in an area where a tornado was uh, uh, targeting, apparently, a few hours ago or a few minutes ago when we talked to uh, John Burke at the National Weather Service, Clark County at Winchester, Bourbon County in the Paris area. You persons are all in a tornado warning area. They tell us a funnel cloud was sighted near Danville at 640 and was moving northeast at about 50 miles per hour. If threatening conditions are sighted, be prepared to move to a place of safety. And by all means, if, uh, if you are in an area now that has been hit by tornado conditions, such as uh, Louisville, Jefferson County, the uh, Palmyra, Indiana vicinity, uh, down at Brandenburg, Kentucky, or at Frankfurt, Jeff? It's uh, just a little after 7. It's 1 after 7 on WHAS Louisville. Give Byron a chance to get something cold down his throat. Uh, it was very, very strange sitting here this afternoon, reading all of the reports, not really knowing what was going on, and then just like a, a, a shock, that first report from traffic tracker Dick Gilbert uh, about what he saw. And... Uh, Having had a large, uh, vast experience in covering things like this all over the country, uh, Dick uh, said that this was one of the, well, how could I, one of the worst he had yeah. ever seen. And uh, the way he actually traced the tornado that went through Jefferson County and uh, each stop along the way. It yeah, was, Jeff, the, uh, the help Dick has given us in the past few days has been immeasurable. Because uh, from that vantage point, uh, seven or eight hundred feet in the air in the helicopter, he can be of great assistance uh, not only to us but to authorities who want to know what's happening with the tornadoes. Uh, of course, he flew over Campbellsburg the other day and gave us a fine report uh, on conditions up there, tracing the path of that tornado. This afternoon, he was actually up while the tornado was cutting that swath through Louisville and Jefferson County. And uh, many thanks go to Dick Gilbert. He'll be up again in the morning. He, uh, of course, uh, does double duty, not only looking at traffic, but all, always checking the weather thing, and then every once in a while taking a uh, television photographer up there to uh, take some films of, <laughs> the, uh, of the destruction. Well, you uh, have certainly you know, been uh, through some of this information before. I think it deserves retelling at least the thing about the water does. They, they kept reemphasizing that. But if you don't have to use water just tonight, uh, don't because uh, the, the water system has been all fouled up, uh, and they, they need to emphasize that, that don't use extra water tonight, not the shower, the bath, you know, drinking water, I'm sure, is all right, and that quantity. And they also emphasize that, please, whatever you do, don't go out and attempt to look at the, what has happened tonight. Uh, you know, this, uh, for lack of a better word, sightseeing. They need the roads open for emergency vehicles. And uh, so, you know... If you must eventually take a look at this, you can uh, you can put it off till later in the week, or you can certainly uh, see it on uh, some of the TV news programs, I suppose. Byron. Well, Jeff, uh, it would be impossible to recap uh, all the information that we have uh, given folks this afternoon, uh, starting way before 5 o'clock, because... <laughs> The information, some of it, was outdated by the time it reached us. Uh, new developments had taken place. Uh, more persons had been found injured and even dead. And uh, so for that reason, we are taking information across the desk as it is passed to us. Uh, we have information that uh, at Newburgh and Indian Trail there is a, a serious problem. Uh, emergency crews on the scene, perhaps someone killed or injured there. Uh, cables down on a truck uh, at I-71, the overlane a mile off I-65, so we can assume that traffic in the I-65, I-71 vicinity is at best uh, very difficult going. Uh, I know that most of the school officials in Louisville and Jefferson County and uh, around the rest of uh, Kentuckiana 
will be concerned as to whether uh, they should have schools tomorrow. Perhaps some of the school buildings have been damaged. But again, I ask you to uh, please let us group uh, the information we have together on the injuries, the damage, and so forth before you uh, call in the cancellations or uh, that classes will be uh, going ahead. Glenn Baston, do you have something? Monica is stationed at uh, Civil Defense Headquarters down at City Hall. And she telephoned us a few minutes ago, and we didn't get her on the air, but uh, uh, apparently a lot of people are going out sightseeing. Folks, don't do this. Stay at home. Uh, give the emergency vehicles the opportunity to get through. Monica, the the water situation, have you had any information uh, in Civil Defense Headquarters on that? Well, the only thing that's being said right now is it's okay for now, but uh, for people not to get in scared and fill up their bathtubs or their sinks thinking they're going to run out of water. Uh, they are concerned about it, but at the moment they think they can handle it. Uh, the thing they're talking about most right now is the need for volunteers, particularly registered nurses. They're looking for um, people with heavy equipment. They're asking people in the construction industry to show up at uh, Chenoweth and uh, 42, where it seems to be hardest hit. They've also uh, offered open up some centers for people who need help. Um, there are three at Barrett Junior High School, a little open at 715, Wagner High School at 730, and Ballard High School. That's for shelter and food. Go through those again, if you will. Okay, that's Barrett Junior High School, Wagner High School, and Ballard. Judge Hollenbeck, by the way, has been in touch in Washington with Senator Huddleston's office and Senator Cook. Uh, in both instances, he said they wanted to know what they could do, but they are at the moment looking at ways possibly of getting a house and urban development loans to help those businesses that might have been damaged and those homes that might have been wrecked. Monica, is there any indication uh, there what we're going to be be reporting tomorrow as far as injuries are concerned within the uh, metro area? No, uh, not at this moment. I couldn't say that because what they're trying to do now mainly is gather the emergency equipment together. Uh, they've contacted Fort Knox to help with tree removal. They're trying to get people off the road. They're trying to get volunteers. Right now they're working all their efforts on this moment of cleaning things up and helping people. Should a volunteer uh, call to, to the office where you're at, what should a volunteer do? A volunteer should show up at one of the three centers, Barrett, Wagner, or Ballard, or the volunteer can go to, they've said, one of the hospitals here, or the volunteer can um, call the Red Cross, and the number for the Red Cross is 5894450. If someone needs help, they should call the Red Cross or else call Civil Defense here, which is 5894230. Okay, Monica, uh, a quick repeat. They're having problems with water, with people on the uh, streets, uh, and that there are three various areas there that they can go to. Uh, Barrett High. I hate to interrupt, but uh, I've just got a tap on the shoulder. Uh, it seems that we can't get the three schools open that they've had designated as centers. Uh, they can't get in, get in touch with Superintendents Van Hoosen and Walker, so if they're out there, tell them to please call Civil Defense so they can get the schools open. Do they have any advice what the people should do in the meantime while they're trying to get these open? <laughs> Well, no one said. <laughs> <laughs> who is who is uh, giving out information there? Who okay, is? we have Joe Ardry, the mayor's staff. Uh, mayor Sloan is in Canada, so Judge Todd Hollenbeck is here. Mayor Pro Tem is Creighton Marchand. He returned just a few moments ago from looking at the damage to his home. It seems that uh, he lost part of his roof and a porch. Um, Alderman Gerda Bendel is here. The Works Department, the Police Department is here. And by the way, uh, the Works Department is pulling some of its cars out of storage. Uh, police did not have enough cars since all of them had to come back on duty, so the works department will be providing the police department with vehicles. Well, you talked about what the volunteers should do as far as the nurses. Now, you mentioned earlier that they also need some heavy equipment. Yes. Uh, Earlier, they had received a call from the Construction Association, which evidently has a disaster unit. And they've tried to get in touch with the units again and have been unable to do it, evidently, because the phone lines are down. So they're trying to get the word out to these men to show up at Chenoweth and 42 with their equipment so that they can uh, get some trees moved and some uh, other work cleaned up.
All right. Monica Kaufman, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we'll be back to you, I guess, as the evening progresses. Okay, Glenn. May we repeat to the uh, school superintendents, Mr. Van Hoos and Mr. Walker, or anyone who might have uh, uh, the capability of opening these three schools, uh, Barrett, Wagner, and Ballard, they would like to use these as centers for the people who are, are now homeless because of this afternoon's storm, but they're having some difficulty getting into them. So those people in Barrett, Wagner, and Ballard, uh, anyone who might be able to, to provide access, please do so. Uh, for those of you who, in the far outer areas of Kentuckyana and those states beyond, I had not realized, and I, I seriously doubt that any of us had, that, that WHAS signal has just zoomed into about uh, 45 or 44 of the other states. And if you're wondering what's happening, we have had uh, a considerable amount of severe weather throughout Kentucky and Indiana. Uh, we may have had it in other areas as well that we do not know about. But uh, WHAS from Louisville, Kentucky, 11 minutes past 7, and we uh, are attempting to provide all the information that we can about what has happened in uh, this storm-ravaged area. The biggest areas, uh, the hardest areas hit, I guess, the metropolitan area of Louisville, and there is some indication now that Frankfurt has uh, had a considerable amount of damage there from a tornado that uh, is probably about a half hour old now. We are told that the Peary County, Indiana schools have canceled classes for tomorrow. Brown and Williamson, the third shift, has been canceled for tonight. The first shift should listen for notice of uh, what will happen tomorrow. Uh, WHAS tomorrow morning, uh, along about 5 or 5.30, we'll begin broadcasting again information and a summary of what we know at that hour of what has happened. So you can join us, and of course our information tonight will continue just as long as it's necessary that we be here.